Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. So the judge finally made his decision on the whole battered spouse syndrome, uh, the his rulings on that. And uh, it was interesting because he kind of denied it in part and he granted it in part. So let me pull up the docket on that so we can take a look at it. I mostly understand it, uh, but I always have a little bit of questions because as you all know, I'm not a lawyer or a paralegal and I don't play one on YouTube. So this again, as you guys know, this is the My E Clerk, Orange County Records. And this is Sarah Boone's uh, infamous page that I visit often. So, here we go. Now, this was filed on Friday, uh, September 20th at 1.05 p.m. I did look on Friday at some point in the afternoon, and I saw that he posted it, but the actual viewable documents were not up. So, I'm not exactly sure at what time they actually hit the um, clerk's website. All right, so this is State of Florida uh, versus Sarah Boone. Order on state's motion to strike defendant's notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome and state's motion in limine and state's motion for examination by state expert and order on state's motion to strike defendant's amended notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome. All right. This cause came before the court on September 19, 2024, on state's motion to strike defendant's notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome and state's motion in limine and state's motion for examination by state's expert e-filed 9-9-2024. The motion, defense response to state's motion to strike defendant's notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome e-filed 9-13-2024. The response, State's motion to strike defendant's amended no notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome, e filed 919 2024, the amended motion. The court, having reviewed the motion, having reviewed the response, having reviewed the amended motion, having reviewed the court file, having considered the authorities and arguments offered by counsel for the state, and having considered the authorities and arguments offered by counsel for defense, finds as follows. A. This matter is set for trial on October 7th, 2024. B. On September 6th, defendant filed a certain notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome. So again, he's making sure everybody knows we're going to trial on the 7th of October. C. The notice provides a statement of particular showing the nature of the defense, battered woman syndrome, as a result of the physical and psychological abuse the defendant sustained at the hands of the alleged victim. George Torres, and the name of address of a witness, which is Dr. Julie Harper. D, on September 6, 2024, the state filed the motion. E, on September 13, 2024, defendant filed the response. On September 15, 2024, defendant filed that certain amended notice of intent to rely on the defense of battered spouse syndrome, the amended notice. G, the amended notice, among other things, provides the same statement of particulars showing the nature of the defense as notice, battered spouse syndrome as a result of the physical and psychological abuse the defendant sustained at the hands of the alleged victim, George Torres, and the names of and addresses of six witnesses, which I'm very interested to find out who those are. I think Brian's probably in there. H. On September 19, 2024, the state filed the amended motion. I. The court finds both the notice and the amended notice comply with Florida R. Crime, crime, crime P. 3.201B. Uh, J. Medina v. State, 260 Southern 3D, 419, Florida 3rd, DCA, 2018, State v. Hickman, 630 uh, South 2D, 172, 176, Florida, 1993, and Ladd v. State, 564 Southern 2D, 587, 587, Florida 2D, DCA, 1990, as relied by the state. All address inclusion or admissibility, excuse, exclusion, excuse me, or admissibility of expert testimony on battered spouse syndrome at trial. Not pretrial exclusion of expert testimony on battered spouse syndrome. Additionally, of Quendo versus State, 357 Southern 3D, 214, 219, Florida 2D, DCA, 2023, review granted SC 2023 087. 
2023 WL7132836. Florida, October 30th, 2023, addresses the introduction of batter's spouse syndrome evidence, not the pretrial exclusion of the same. Okay, the state relies heavily on Wagner versus State, 247-3D-795, Florida 1st DCA 2017. In Wagner, according to the appellate's testimony, as she bent down to pick up the keys with her left hand, the gun that she was holding in her right hand accidentally discharged, that she absolutely did not intentionally pull the trigger, and that she was not aiming at anything when the gun went off. The bullet discharged and struck the husband in the lower back. The trial court precluded appellate from presenting the batter's bell syndrome at trial. L. At the hearing, no outright evidence of an accident was presented. See defendant's statement is outlined in 10 of the amended notice. All right. So orders and a judges as follows. One, the motion and amended motion are granted in part and denied in part. Two, the motion and amended motion are granted and the defendant shall submit to an examination by an expert of the state's choosing. See Dilbeck versus State 643 Southern 2D 1027 uh, Florida 1994. Said examination shall take place no later than September 26, 2024. So that would be this week at some point. Three. The motion and amended motion are denied and that notice and the amended notice shall not be stricken. Four, state's request preclude defendant from mentioning battered spouse syndrome in her opening statement is denied. Five, state's request to prevent any mention of battered spouse syndrome until admissible evidence of a justifiable use of deadly force is admitted into evidence at trial and admissible evidence of battered spouse syndrome is admitted into evidence at trial is denied done and ordered in chambers at orlando orange county florida this 20th day of september 2024 signed circuit judge michael s Cranick. that was a lot so kind of a win and not a win so what gets me is and he was really trying to clarify that with owens because you know how this whole time this whole time Sarah's like, it was an accident, it was an accident. We were playing, you know, and you know, I you know, I didn't mean to leave him in the suitcase. I didn't mean to leave him in the suitcase. So this whole battered spouse syndrome to me is just I mean, really? I mean, I'm curious how they're going to prove that. And I see that, you know, they're gonna be probably using some of that body cam and these witnesses, but y'all saw some of the videos that I've been sharing and have been all been all over the you know, YouTube. I think she's the instigator i mean i'm not saying george is, is innocent he was not an angelic person okay he the two of them they fought okay they they argued they fought but remember how she kept saying to everybody it was a good day it was such a good day we were painting doing puzzles you know yeah all this other stuff so how does it go from that to oh he was beating me up and somehow I made him get into the suitcase and he died. So again, we all know there's just so many questions and throwing this battered spouse syndrome into the pile and telling the judge, oh, it's not an accident. And even he's like, okay. So we have gone from it was unintentional because that's what she's been going with from the get-go. I accidentally did. I forgot about him. I went upstairs and I fell asleep. I fell asleep. And I didn't realize he couldn't get out. This little hole, he could have put his finger out. That's what she's telling everybody and their mother. And now, oh no, she put him in there because she felt unsafe. So which is it, Sarah? It, apparently, what it is, is whatever she thinks is going to get her off the hook. And I don't think any of it is. So we have, we'll have to see what the jury has to say about what they think of this case. And, and I think it's going to take a couple days, like the judge states, to get, you know, a good jury. Because I do think a lot of folks haven't heard of this case. Because you have to think about it, a lot of us on YouTube and that follow, the, you know, true crime and all these cases, we're, we're more than aware of, you know, a lot of these things. But we follow that, you know. The common person probably doesn't know so it's going to depend upon he's got 50 states coming in the morning and then another 50 in the afternoon so he could get everybody on that first day and then finalize everything on tuesday so i'll be interested to see how long it does take to get a jury i, I i'm actually starting to think it's not going to be one day either so i'm very interested in 
how long it takes. Now, one more thing I wanted to cover. We, there's a lot of other stuff on here if you guys want to go and check it out uh, at the my, uh, myclerk.myorangeclerk.com. But remember how they have all these. These are all the motions that got approved. Um, these, they obviously have um, Mr. Lane, the investigator. Uh, you know, they approved all this other stuff. What gets me is there's an expert... A death investigator, okay? Defendants amended motion to appoint crime scene reconstructionist and death investigator. So this has been granted, as we heard on Thursday. But this guy, I don't think he's a really good witness for them. There's some sketchy stuff about him, okay? Now this is the the, the uh, expert that they have hired. His name is Dr. Michael Berkland. He's a crime scene reconstructionist and death investigator. Now, he's got many years of experience, but I found out he's got a very creepy, odd, sketchy past. Uh, thanks to the, the channel, uh, I found out through another channel, and her channel's name is Caricatures Pro um, Productions here. This is actually her channel right here, Characters Productions. I'm going to link to her channel, and there's a whole video where she goes over all about this doctor. But in a nutshell, I did a quick Google check, okay? She's, she and her, her PI friend have done a very good deep dive. Uh, but he had, like, parts of remains and things in a storage unit. So back in 2012, he got into a lot of trouble okay so all you have to do is google dr michael Berglund, and you're going to see all kinds of really strange things so i suppose that kind of works for sarah boone and company though right but i can't wait to see what the state has to say about him when he gets on the stand yeah very interesting expert to hire and it does look like he's getting 200 dollars an hour so yeah all right, so that's kind of where things are. Uh, again, uh, it was a win and not a win for both sides on the whole batter spouse thing. But I, I don't think, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that's a really stupid move? I mean, like I said, we've heard all this time that it was an accident. She, it was unintentional. And I initially believed it was unintentional. But lately I started to go, well, maybe she forced him in there. And then she decided she didn't give a crap. So, again, lots of questions as to Sarah Boone's intentions with of George in the suitcase. So, yeah. So I'm always curious to you guys' thoughts, and I love reading your comments. Uh, I found out also uh, late last week that I will not be able to make it to the first week of the trial for opening statements, which I'm very disappointed in after all this time. I will be doing a week of training at work for a new uh, area. So I'm going to have to go the second week at some point. I'm trying to figure out what day. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts on that, please let me know. I'm always curious what you guys think. And I really would love to be there if Sarah gets on the stand. But I think it's going to be hard to know what day that might be. So I might pick like the Thursday or the Friday. I, I don't know. So... But let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. And uh, with that said, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.